and they're off and racing for the Investec Derby. The Derby is, is tough, it's, it can't be much tougher. The best calls turn out. You might know the best calls going into it, but you'll definitely know the best calls coming out. Obviously, it takes a unique horse to win the Investec Derby every year. It's, it's um, one of those very special races, if not the most special race of all for a three-year-old. The young colt, mentally, it'll be a little bit, little bit edgy, a little bit frail. The atmosphere is massive. When you've that many people all together in a small enough area, and there's an unbelievable vibe off of people and vibe of energy off of them, and that's transported into the horses. Their adrenaline is pumping a long time. It really uh, rides steep much steeper than what it walks and even to look at it on the tele television you can't appreciate how tough a track it is. The horse is going to the start on the day, they have to go all the way down the track to full mile and a half to get to the start and that's a huge test to the horse as much as the actual race course itself. It rises 40 metres so that's a, that's a severe test so you, if you run too freely the first three, four furlongs you can leave your race there also. You need a very well balanced horse because they have to go down the hill and they have to take that in the corner. And if you don't have speed, you lose your position down the hill into the straight. And if you don't stay, you won't get home because the, the straight climbs all the way up to the line. We've Tatnam Corner in, in Ballyd Island. When the horses start working on the grass, it's the only way home. They'd have cantered around hundreds of times before. Epson was the ultimate race. It has to be an advantage, but the ultimate thing is you have to have the horse with the pedigree and the physique. All the boxes have to be ticked in the racehorse in order to win the derby. You really have to have a firm idea of what slot you want to end up in, uh, crossing the road at the top of the hill. The margins can be very fine and often are very fine. It's the one thing that all owners and breeders want to win. I, I, I think it, there's no race like the derby. Galileo goes on to win it. Second is good. He was an amazing horse. When it happened on the day, it was unbelievable, really. Camelot moves past Astrology into third is main sequence, but up towards the line, it is Camelot who leads by three or four lengths from Astrology. Joseph was very young, he was only 19 at the time, it was incredible really, so it was one of those days that we'll never forget. And at the line, the father and son combination of Joseph and Aidan O'Brien won the Investec Derby with Camelot. It was 10 years since we won it, Camelot had won the Guineas, won the race in post. You do feel the pressure a little bit, obviously, on the days like that, but once you get into the parade ring and you're getting ready to get up on the horse, you step into a different kind of a, a zone. He coped with it extremely well. He was the horse he could race a little bit free um, if let, and um, he was obviously by Manchu, so you're always, you're always worried that there is a little streak in them. But he was a very talented horse. He had an awful lot of class and an awful lot of speed. I remember cantering at the start, and, and the reins were, were, were looped in his neck once he got to the end of the straight, and I knew then that the occasion was, was enough to get into him. Joseph rode him very cool, like he, he dropped him right out, he put him asleep, he didn't take part the first half of the race. Very hard thing to do on a, a very short price favourite. It was written in the stars, a day of destiny, as Australia wins an Epsom Classic. Australia is very like Galileo, and maybe could be even a little bit sharper than Galileo. They're lovely laid back horses, have plenty of strength, like he had nice shoulders on him. They're very exciting, obviously. He had an unbelievable mind. He was probably the only horse we ever had that had no fight or flight response. And out of thousands of horses we've had, he didn't have any. So like, he always listened to uh, his rider. He would have never seen an occasion like he did in Epsom, so you still can't take any chances. When they get to the, to the big day and the big occasion and the fanfare and everything, you still have to be careful that they don't uh, get a, a little bit panicked or upset or get a fright. But he was an extremely relaxed horse, and that was my job very easy. You'd be far more nervous watching a, a horse running and having the runner in the race than ever you would have been, I would have been riding. When you're a rider, you're, you, uh, when they leave the parade ring, your job is only starting, whereas uh, from a trainer's point of view, your job is finished, so it's a quite, quite a different experience. The history of the race is, is extraordinary and it was great to uh, be involved in it. Partnerships are, are vital in life in every way. Uh, two people working together is the same as uh, a horse and a jockey is a, probably a more important partnership than anything because the horse feeds from the rider's personality, especially on an everyday basis, and that's how a horse develops a personality. So it's vital. It's like a person working at home. Somebody that you like, you'll work better with, and the results will be better, and you'll work longer and harder and everything. And the same with a horse. If a horse uh, needs to trust the rider, and the rider needs to trust the horse, really. That keeps things uh, very simple and plans meticulously every little detail as far as preparing every horse for, for every race. 
Joseph, for me, how cool he was and his, his preparation, like he, he was meticulous in his preparation. He'd draw diagrams, he'd know where horses were they thought they were going to be. If it played out, he was always able to change naturally, nearly without even thinking about it, and was never afraid to change. It was uh, incredible for us, really.